if you can get something just to push up just anything to push up right there about where your hand is because this there it went there it went you're under now Okay, I've got all my joists cut. I had to plane the tops of some of these and straighten them out just a little bit. I just put a straight edge on there and took my little small planer and planed it down to straighten it out. I've got one here. It's just sitting there loose. It's not nailed in. I've got this one by here to keep my girder out at the right distance that it needs to be. And this one before is holding that. And I just set this joist in there. This, this first set of joists will be a double because there will be a wall. It's not a really a bearing wall, but anywhere I have a wall that's running parallel with the floor joist, I like to put a double, double joist there. So we'll get busy here and start putting these in. Now I can take this one by off. Since I am putting blocks in between the joists, I have to cut each one individually just in case one of these joists is a little bit thicker or a little bit thinner. So I'm doing a custom cut on them. girder in over here and I put a little ledger I'm not sure you can see it there's a, a ledger down at the bottom and then I have another ledger over here on this I'll step over there so you can see there's a ledger right there that these joists actually sit on and this 2 by 12 screwed to this timber here this skid and there's also support down underneath on top of the little short pieces of treated that's sitting on top of the concrete that actually helped hold that up there's another another one over there and i'm i'm putting a block in between each one i could have used joist hangers but uh i'm trying to save as much money as i can and you can see i've blocked over here now i've made sure that when the carriage mill carriage rolls down i have clearance here so the floor itself the, the boards will run this way this direction and I'll have to hold them back to where the frame of the carriage will not uh, be running against the floor boards themselves but they will come up even with the top of the rail here all right we have all of the floor joister in now and I've started putting the floor down these are just some one by tens and one by whatever the width turned out to be and we're putting these down with uh, two and a half inch torque screws. So I've got that little section right there to do that'll be at the end of the, the mill head. And this section right here, we'll have the floor down and we'll start framing some walls. Okay, we've got this first board on here. 
and I have just a little bit of a space between the edge of this frame here and the edge of the board, this nut here rides, this, this not screwed down, it'll go down a little bit further, and I can just clear that nut right there. So we can actually roll this on down, and we'll have clearance all the way down, and not have to worry about it uh, rubbing against anything here. We're good here. I'll hold that now. We've got the floor on there and it's all screwed down. We've got the little portion of the floor over here that will be in front of the, the mill head. And of course, the other side. We have our clearance for the carriage to go down through there on both sides. We're getting ready to start framing some walls now. You know, we can roll real easy there. As you can see, we have started framing in the storage room for the mill head and we'll have some other stuff in here also. We've got one window that will be right in this opening here. It's a 3030 window. It's a, a used window. It's one that I had at the shop, but it'll be okay for this application and let a little light in there. This wall here in the front hasn't been framed yet. This will have the opening for the, the mill head to go through. We'll have a six foot opening for it. And I have a, a header cut. This is a three and a half by five and a half header that we'll put up there at the top of the doorway. And you can see Brother Wayne has started putting the blocking in for the board and batten siding. The studs, since we do have the knee braces, we had to cut up against those, which wasn't too difficult. This will make for a, a really nice storage area for the mill head. We always run a row of fire blocks, what I call a fire block, and that'll be one of the places that we can nail. And then we have another row of blocks up there and one right there to nail the, the siding into. I went ahead and put my upper plate on so that I can just put these studs in easier. I don't have room enough here to lay the wall down and shoot it together like we normally do. So I just uh, went ahead and put this up. I've got a stud on, on that end at the corner. And here I had to do something a little bit different because uh, the, the end of the wall, let me get back here so it actually goes back to the outside of this six by eight beam. And so I had to kind of fill this in a little bit and anchor this top plate to the, to the stud and into the beam here. And I'm just using three inch torque screws on the top and I can toe nail the bottom. So well, that's got that cut at the top. And since I've already got my ladder set up, I'll go ahead and put my stud in that goes beside the opening.
All right, did you go in before me? Okay. They both kind of broke the edge. Yeah, I'm gonna have to scoot this one back just a hair. Okay. Give me a ladder up here. I hope I can get in there too. That screw. Just scoot that out just a little bit. Okay. I can go. I don't want to get you undone there. Okay, what we've got is this plate has got a wave in it right there in the middle. Okay. Right. Uh, what I'm going to do is hold this. Okay. And if you can get, well, I've got to be here to hold it. Uh, if you can get something just to push up, yeah. just anything to push up right there about where your hand is, because this, there it went, there it went. You're under now. Yeah, it's got to go over that way. Okay. Are we over? Yeah, now the bottom is kissing off. But at the top, you've got about an eighth of an inch gap. Okay, I'm going to do a little toenail pulling it that way. Okay. Did it go? Yeah, it, it closed it up. Okay. Battery. <laughs> Wouldn't you know. If you can find me a thin wedge, I'm going to raise this about a sixteenth of an inch. Thank you. That's perfect. Yeah. I'll go down through there and put some screws in the top and make it line up. I'll get out there in the middle and then bring it out just a little. Okay, we've got this wall here framed now, and we've already checked to make sure that the mill head would go in between here. I'll still put another two before here that comes up underneath this header on both sides for my trimmers, and then we'll put a door frame in there for the to complete the opening. But we're not quite ready for that yet. But we are ready to snap our lines and put the blocks in. We've got all of the blocking in for the 
the board and batten that we'll be putting on. I'm going to wrap this with some Tyvek. This room is not going to be heated, but I'm going to put some Tyvek on there to kind of cut some air off so we can kind of have it somewhat airtight. It won't be completely airtight, and I'll show you the reason. I went ahead and floored in between the rails on the track here so that we can get across the floor. I've left the room that I need right here for the head to roll up and not be rubbing against anything. And also put in a couple of steps here that so we can get up and down and cross from one side to the other without any without any problem. Pretty handy. I can just go up. It's very comfortable. So I'm thankful that I did that. We've started putting the uh, the boards on. This will be board and bat. We've got a, a window in here. These are one by 12 yellow pine. They haven't been sawed, but about maybe three weeks or a month, something like that. And they will still shrink. And you can see we're just putting one screw right in the center of the board. And we are turning the growth rings with the, as some people say, the smile of the growth rings is out. And when it dries, it, if it has a tendency to cup, it will pull the outer edges in and we'll come back before we put the batch strips on and put more screws in. It's the time of year where we're getting some heat and wind. So I would imagine these boards will dry out pretty quick right now. They're at about 13 to 14%. And we'll wait till they dry. And then we'll come back and do the batten strips. I think I had said that we were going to put Tyvek. This is not actually Tyvek, it's Permapro does the same thing, it's just a plastic house wrap. I was going to point out, I've got a temporary strip up there at the top to butt against. I didn't have enough of the boards that were long enough to go all the way up to the tops of the rafters and switch where we'll stop it off at the top. So I'll have to make a water table and put on there and then use some shorter boards to go on up. <laughs> Thank you.